All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Stage Door Theater Podcast, hosted by a couple of regular dudes. Uh, Ron's not here to make his normal fiber joke, so you guys win already. <laughs> <laughs> he does it too much. And now he's got me saying it, so that's sad and pathetic. So I don't even know. So we're at the Toledo Met. I actually came to the Toledo Met's building, and I was a bad, bad host, and I got myself all confused and Carolyn was mess- nice enough to message me and be like, I'm at your house. No, not really, but close enough. I know. Uh, we were like two ships in the night. Yeah, but my house is a total disaster. We're redoing our kitchen, and it is covered in drywall dust, and it's not good. Oh, that's fun. So, plus, I wanted to come here anyway because I've never been to your facility, never seen it. I saw a post, gosh, I don't even know how long ago. You guys just popped up. How long have you been in business? Just a little over a year. Oh, yeah, That's it? We're brand new. Yeah. It already feels longer than that, though. It, 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 you're not kidding. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> well, I know, because we were like, I want, you to, I want you guys on because you guys do training. You do dance mm-hmm. and acting mm-hmm. and singing. You guys do it all. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait a minute, who is this group? Who right. is this group? I need to get a hold of them. They sound exactly what we need in this area You know, to, to prepare. Like, you guys are all-encompassing. We have vocal coaches. Right. And we have dance studios. And we have acting classes that are hosted by theater companies. You guys do it all here. We do. That's right. Wow. So when we conceptualized Toledo Met, we started originally as a spinoff and we're kind of focused on the ballet division. Uh Uh-huh. But both Stephanie and I have kids that are involved in musical theater. Yeah, you were just saying that that both of your children are in uh, Perrysburg right now doing the Les Mis. They are. Which I received a message from somebody that's running that and is like, hey, you guys need to... Come on. Actually, it wasn't somebody running it. I think it was just a mom who said, is anybody, you guys need to come see this. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, but we have no time. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Perrysburg Musical Theater is awesome. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they're both. So uh, we have kids that are both involved in that world. And when we conceptualized the Met, we decided that we wanted to do both dance, but then also musical theater training or triple threat training. Yeah. So that. Because we've both been through the rigmarole of trying to find acting coaches, voice coaches, voice teachers. You as parents, you yes, mean, have as both parents, been through right? All. right. Yeah. We, we have kids that dance too, right? So we've got we've got them in all walks. So because yeah. your children do not just dance, they do theater as well. You've you're, you have, you're very experienced when it comes to the needs, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And so nobody's doing that, so let's do it. Exactly. Oh. So we realized that that triple threat training is important. So, you know, when you're approaching community theater, you're approaching an audition. So Mm -hmm. a kiddo goes into an audition and they're asked to usually read, sing, and then do a choreography or piece yeah, of choreography. Yeah, then they have a dance call, exactly. And then they have that dance call and meltdown, typically, because <laughs> that's not their thing, usually. They're, that's the most common fish-out-of-water scenario for a kid that can that is interested in musical theater. Agree, 100%, because I've seen it the other way, too, where there are these wonderful dancers that are like, well, I can't do theater, because I don't sing in front of mm-hmm, people. That's true. And it's like, what? But you're such a great dancer. How do you, you haven't even, no, I'm uncomfortable doing that. Yeah. So what's interesting was we, I have a 15 year old daughter who had taken ballet up until about the age, well, COVID hit when she was 10, 11, somewhere in there. And what's your name? Let's give her a shout out. Mary Kate Savage. Mary Kate Savage. Yay, Mary Kate. So she, didn't want to pursue ballet, but she was in class at Toledo Ballet. And at Toledo Ballet, when you hit about that age, the rubber meets the road. You got to go on point or you kind of got to get out of the game. And she wanted to continue with dance. It's serious time, right? right? It's like, are you going to be a serious ballet dancer? or? And she said, no, thank you. So she wanted to do musical theater, but she needed that, those dance props and the dance education. So when we start to look around in Toledo, you see Toledo Ballet, which is very ballet oriented, right. or you see competitive ba- competitive dance studios, which is a whole nother ball of wax. Yes, it is. And so a competitive dance studio isn't a great fit for a musical theater kid because they don't want to go compete. I, it's a great, I love what they do. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work for these particular students because they just want to up their musical theater toolbox. Yeah, and as far as I'm aware, you're the only one that is doing that in like around hours, even like hours or you can go in an hour circle from here. And I don't know anybody's still doing this and, and you're hundred percent right. And that is 
the dance studios, and we have some really, really great ones here, mm-hmm. um, are hardcore dance studios. Right. So when do you find time in there to ever do anything else if that's what you are interested in doing? If you're interested in doing more than just dancing, well, they're not going to have that. They're R- just dance. Right, right. And so when we conceptualize this, we kind of, our goal is to get the kids educated enough and comfortable enough in those three disciplines. So acting, singing, dancing, so that when they do go to a place like Perry's Bird Musical Theater or the Rep or CTW or the Croswell. Yeah, one of the dozen yeah, or so pro, right. you know, places here. They walk into that audition super um, confident in all three areas that they're going to be asked to audition in. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Stephanie, so your, your son is also doing stuff as well? He is, yes. He is. And yeah. so she was talking about, you know, Carolyn was talking about how you guys are on the search all the time trying to find vocals and acting and all that kind of stuff. Did he have a lot of... How old is he? First of all, I should ask that he's, question. Yeah, he's sixteen. Sixteen. So he's he's had many many years of trying to to find vocals and that kind of stuff. Did he has he did he have a lot of success finding all those places? It people? was it was difficult, and yeah. it, actually he didn't start until he was in I believe seventh grade. So for him it was starting a little later and having to really hit the ground running. Right. Yeah. So for him, it was having to find the the voice teacher, having to find some dance training because he realized, as Carolyn said, that was a deficit for him. Mm-hmm. It was, they were all deficits for him. He had to really hit the ground. So running, he wasn't so. a dancer first. He was, he was not my daughter. My daughter. Okay. A and, and, but daughter your daughter well. was a dancer mm-hmm. who loved doing other stuff too. Mm-hmm. So your son, what's his name? Matthew, Matthew Matthew. Cole, Cole, right? (laughs) So Matthew is like, I like this theater stuff Mm -hmm. and I'm just going to personalize it to myself and my family too. We ran into the same thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think everybody whose kids are doing theater run into the situation where they're like, I don't have enough dance or I don't Mm -hmm. have enough of something. And so my kids were what uh, Carolyn was talking about, where they would go into and, and it sounds exactly like what Matthew is doing is like, I can sing and I can dance or I can act. But as right. soon as that dance thing happens, mm-hmm. uh oh, I may have knocked myself out of getting a role because I can't dance. I can't do anything. Yeah. And it depends. I, I think so. Our goal for our students inside of our musical theater programming is that. They, when they start the program, like a sem- we run on a semester basis. So we okay. have a fall semester and a, you know, a winter spring semester. And then we have summer classes that are more camp clinic. They run by the week. Um, but for instance, last semester we did a musical, we did Little Mermaid Junior. Oh, you do your own shows. Yeah, we, yeah. Oh, we, yeah, we did. Know that. So, Captions. but it was a little bit different. It was set up a little bit differently than what your children might see if they went to a, a, community theater where if they go to a community theater they show up they audition they get a role and then they go to the rehearsals that they're called for correct so here they came in it was monday nights for three hours saturdays for three hours for the first four weeks of class all they did during those six hours a week was instruction acting instruction dance instruction so they all had to have tap shoes jazz shoes they took tap and jazz every week two times a week. Oh, wow. And then um, they did vocal work with our teachers here. And then four weeks into it, we did audition prep or audition workshops. And then they actually auditioned for the show and we cast it from within inside the class. Gotcha. So in order to be in the show, you had to be in the class. So then we, then we went into rehearsals. And during rehearsals, when... We say we were working on scene eight and you weren't in scene eight. Those kids were in a dance class. So there was no downtime. They were learning while they were also working on blocking the scene. Oh my scenes. gosh, this is exactly what I hoped you would be. You're not a community theater. You are a training school. Exactly. It's it's all about learning and teaching and figuring that out and not about being the star on the stage, it sounds like. Right. Love it. So, you know, it, it was a small class. Either the kids had a very large role or they had multiple small roles. Multiple little roles. So like we quick change was really interesting. Have you ever seen a bunch of seagulls go to sailors really, really fast? Because we have. (laughs) Little mermaid. Yeah. Little mermaid. (laughs) And then back again. And and then back to seagulls. Yeah. Yeah. It was 
Um, but we perform at the Franciscan. Okay. That's kind of our home theater. And at, in, at Lord's University. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. And um, we did two performances on Mother's Day. We sold really well. Mm-hmm. Um because I think because it was a Mother's Day and it was a fun And it's a Little Mermaid. So, mm-hmm. And you know what else was interesting about this program is that we limited it to third to eighth grade. So the yeah. oldest kids in the, the production were eighth graders. Because mm-hmm. the other thing that we noticed was when you have young students, like maybe eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and they go to a community theater, um, Depending on the ages of the production that they're doing, they may get that token little kid. Right, role. exactly. It could be the villager in Beauty and the Beast. Right. Little village kid. Right. Or they could be young Fiona in mm. Shrek, right? Yes. Or there's those, or Baby Bear in Shrek, or, you know, some of those token little kid roles. We wanted to give them, the younger kids, more opportunity to take the bigger roles. Absolutely. So they have that experience it. when they go out and they try to do something over the summer or they try to do something in their local community. Theater. Right. Cause I always look at the, you know, the audition set up for some of these uh, community theater groups and it's like, well, this kid's never had a major role. Will they ever be, will they be able to handle being, you know, I don't know. They've only been able, been allowed to be the little villager girl. So let, until you give them a part, who's right. going to know, right? And that is a huge step for any of these uh, young people out there that are doing community theater when they get that part that has like a line and then a part that has even more lines. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm making it. But you guys are giving them an opportunity right. to be Belle in Beauty and the Beast. Right. And for instance, every kid that was enrolled in our Little Mermaid Junior had a solo at some mm. point. So they were all singing. And we always, you know, we had, a, we had a lot of kids come in with no singing or voice coaching. And I've always said that singing in front of a crowd by yourself is probably one of the most vulnerable things oh my gosh, that yes. a human being can do. Most adults won't do it, right? Uh, they just, yeah. nope. I've never been in a show. Mm-mm. I just like watching it. And, and, and I appreciate the amount of guts and talent it takes to be up there, but I, I'm a I'm a coward. I can't do it. So so we tell parents that if you can get your kids in early and you can get them through that confidence builder, they'll never even learn how to be nervous. Right when they're younger, it's just like part of their life. It. Right. Yeah, this is normal. I'm just I do this all the time. It's no big deal, especially when they're younger and they haven't learned. I guess, like really young, it's still, it's weird to sing in front of or whatever people. They, they don't have that judgment from their peers. Like, what are you doing? Now it's like, this is just what I do all the time. So, and then in addition for Little Mermaid Junior, we had a group acting and singing class, which okay. were six to eight year olds. So they didn't meet that third grade thresh- threshold. So they were six all... Six to eight years old. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Not six to eighth grader. No, just, six no. to yeah. eight years yeah. old. So they all, they did a class, group singing and acting, and then they were in the ensemble. Oh, they still got to be in the show. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Singing off on the wings and that kind of stuff. And then we also had, we worked our primary, which is five and six year old, Hip hop class. Oh, nice! And our they did they were part of what was it? Um, Under the sea. Under the sea. Yes. Mm-hmm. And our creative movement, which is three and four year olds, were Holy in smokes. You got an army of kids it, that come to it, this place. Yeah. yeah. And another primary ballet class. We're in it? Kiss mm-hmm. the Girl. Mm-hmm. It's called primary ballet. That's mm-hmm. the like primary it's an, school. It's an age group. Right? It's yeah. five and six year olds. Right. So we had five and six year old ballerinas and three and four year old <laughs> ballerinas that took part. In the ensemble Adorable. for uh, Kiss the Girl, Kiss the for girl. that scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we worked some of our dance classes into the musicals. So those kids got a musical experience at the age of three. Right. So even though they're not actually like in the sh- rehearsals for the show all that time, right. they still f- felt like they were part and mm-hmm. involved in this and production just, that the whole yeah, studio is doing. Right. And we just plugged nice. them in nice. at the end. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was super cool. We had like about... 58 kids mm-hmm. in the cast yep. oh my and gosh. um it went really we didn't know how that was gonna go <laughs> yeah <laughs> no wonder you need the franciscan center though too you can't just put this off anywhere 58 kids in the show right you need a stage a yeah lot of moving parts yeah right? a lot of lot of, how is the sets and that kind of stuff do you guys go all out on those too costumes and sets we or? did yes we okay did. So we had two backdrops that I think we, with three, three backdrops that we use, we rented and then, um, wow, you rented backdrops even. And then we, we beg borrowed and 
Well, that's part of the deal, man. We didn't man. steal. We, we didn't steal. We didn't steal. <laughs> Same for Big Barreled and did and not built. steal. Did not steal. Right. St. <laughs> John's Jesuit and St. Francis lent right. us a lot of stuff. Nice. So that was really nice. Well, St. So, Francis, I know the guy over there, Ward. Ward he's a great yeah, guy. He's yeah. a great guy. He's more than happy to help spread the love of theater as well. So. It was kind of like we, you were at Big Fish. Right. Big Fish for who? Uh, St. Saint John's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We had seen, I had seen Big Fish and... Eyeballed a few pieces and thought we could use that. We could use that. We could use that. So, oh my gosh, you, yeah. what is your role here? Are you a producer? What do you do? Because that's, that's exactly what they do. You can't never just go and enjoy the dang show, can you? Right. And so You're we like, started oh. texting people, calling people. Can we use these things? And and it worked out really well. That's funny. So, like, and I then Ward did something rotten, and we're like, hey, can you? It was like two weeks before our show at the Franciscan. Uh-huh. We're like, can you leave the table? Can we borrow that? <laughs> just leave it. He's like, yeah. He just left they it just for left us. It. Yeah. That's so hilarious. it was awesome. <laughs> I love the uh, the whole again back to you guys training. That's what the whole goal of your group is, right? Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it because there is there is a lot, and I'm glad that you're filling that need in the area to have that. Because I had said before, and I'll give another specific example, is that my kids were in Shrek when they were real little. And it became the if, if anybody's seen Shrek, there's a there's a lot of tap. <laughs> there's mm-hmm. you know in in Dulock dancers and all that kind of stuff. And man, they killed it when it came to the singing and then the acting. And then it was like, whoever wants to do the tap number, we can do tappers. And my daughter was like, well, I don't have any tap, but I'm going to try anyway. And I remember seeing her out there with a friend of hers who also had no tap. And they were just like completely lost and completely confused. And it was kind of like for me as a dad going, well, they tried. You know, at least they tried. They they gave the effort out there, but there's no way they're going to make this this thing. And that, that's one of those hiccups of now you guys come here. So when they come in here, you're saying it's a semester long thing. Can you explain like so? Is it they sign up because this that's different too? Because like if you join a a dance studio here in town, you're just part of the studio and you're you're signed up all year long mm-hmm. and you never leave. And they got you in for the next year and the next year and the next year. And that's not the way. And if you do community theater, you're in for that one show. Right. And then you're gone. Sounds like you guys are in the middle. You're like the porridge is just right. Yeah. So we offer a musical theater dance lab on Saturday mornings. That's mm-hmm. that goes. So one thing that's cool about musical theater kids is that they don't. You can have a 15 year old who's like jamming out with an eight year old and they like kind of love it. They learn to love each other. I love the community that happens in casts amongst those kids. They're so good to each other. Oh yeah. But we have a musical theater dance lab on Saturday morning, starting for our fall semester. So our fall semester starts August 19th. That's an hour and a half course that runs for 16 weeks. And those kids will get tap jazz, ballet, hip hop during those 90 minutes a week. They might not have tap every week, but they'll have it enough so that they can start to polish that toolbox. You were saying, though, the mix is ages. Are they mixed ages? They in the are class, mixed. Or are it's they a, taught by it's the a older? mixed age. Okay. So, no, we all of our teachers at the Met are adults. So, yeah. like, minimum college student, mm-hmm. like, who, and they all have certifications and yeah, experience, BFAs yeah, believe, and yeah, all the fun mm-hmm. stuff. Um, so we have that program for our musical theater dancers and we do have a lot of high schoolers that take that class. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have other tap jazz contemporary classes that some of the more advanced musical theater kids can take, but it's just 45 minutes, you know, 50 minutes a week. Um, the other thing that we do work with is the kids like what would happen with my daughter, for instance, is she would get cast in a show and it would interfere, like her rehearsals would interfere Mm -hmm. with her Tuesday night ballet class from five to six. Right. So what we would do, what we do here is we just allow those classes, you get credits. So if you miss a class, just come make one up. Nice. So, and those credits are good for a year. There's like a little floating schedule for them. Exactly. So that allows some flexibility because our musical theater classes aren't geared towards a production of any sort so like for instance we do a showcase at the end of the school year so in may for our dance classes but our musical theater dance classes 
they don't have to perform in it. They right. don't perform in it. We're not working towards. That's different than you guys is. actually doing a show, though, too. Right, totally different. So it's yes. just different. So it's like this is my musical. It's like a re- dance class. Yeah, training so like, class. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. See, again, this is what I love. I love that you guys have this training. It's like this is tap, and it is dance, and it is great. And oh, by the way, you're going to need it a lot for when you have an audition. Right. And right. there's this over here it, with with singing and vocals. And oh, by the way, you can just do that, or you're going to need it a lot when it's time for auditioning. Does exactly. that sound about right? Yeah. All right, mm-hmm. I'm on the ball here. I'm figuring things yeah. out. <laughs> so like, for instance, I know like Ward and Sign at St. Francis just announced their musical for next year. And what are they like, doing? They're doing SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Oh, I didn't Woo! know that actually. I love yeah. that. <laughs> um, so, but he was like, get your tap shoes ready. And last year we had some of his dancers in um, to do tap and because they needed it for something right. St. Francis is yeah. known for their tap. They're yep. going to have tap in every show. So, they're, they're exactly. Not, I, t- as long as Ward is over there, I think they'll have tap every single show, too. He's going to continue it until he's not there anymore, which who knows, and that'll be probably years and years. But, yeah, and we have a lot of really good musical theater right here at Northview and Southview. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> so we get those kids, like, they're doing Chicago, Chicago. this summer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we worked out a deal with them. They were all really nervous about their their auditions. So they wanted jazz instruction. So we just wow. created a class for the so Northview you, kids. So when you say they were, like, are you the saying kids. The, the students the that students. were already The Northview students? students, no. No. No, just like a mom knew about us, and she oh. was like, hey, we have a whole bunch of kids that want some jazz instruction so they can audition and feel like they know what they're doing for their just Chicago build audition. build the confidence, obviously. So, so when they show up, they're not just flopping around right. out there. Right. So we worked with them to create a class, and wow, they did it like probably like five weeks in a row, and then they all went and auditioned. It was like an intensive, then, exactly, basically. Exactly, like yeah. An intensive right. Created class. an intensive for them. Yeah. And it was just for Northview nice. kids and... Yeah. Well, it's just for that particular yeah. show. I would you right. have it for anything else? Exactly. Right. So, and they asked you specifically anyway. So yeah, yeah. for them. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. So, yeah. I mean, we're happy to put stuff like that together cool. for area schools or theaters that need that or kids. That that was a group of kids. That was like for- right. That wasn't that wasn't Don coming over here no. and saying, "Hey, we're going to do this." Mm-mm. That was his. No, students. that was his students who just love theater at Northview anyway, and wanted to do and good in their be auditions. Better. Exactly, because yeah. they know that Jeremy and Don are going to be like, "You need to be better." That's they just they have high stuff over there. So that's awesome. See yeah. again, there's that love and that passion of theater and want to in this area that you guys are tapping into as well. Yeah, and so it's just kind of like, how can we help? So. Yeah. So yeah, and then we have our whole ba- ballet division. So uh-huh. we have a full Nutcracker in December. Wow! So we're bringing in. Our See, I, how come I, I I'm not following you close enough? I didn't know you guys are producing shows. I thought it was going to be just literally training and teaching. Well, you can't have a ballet division without a Nutcracker. No. It's like having uh, the NFL with no Super Bowl. That's the Super Bowl. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't. But see, that's the thing, though, is you guys are offering, like, a lot of dance studios offer ballet, but they don't have Nutcracker. Correct. And we, just to just to explain, we don't, we, our ballet classes are technique. Mm-hmm. If the kids join the production, rehearsals are on top of that. We never do gotcha. production work inside of a technique class. So, um, in our... Nutcracker is actually open to non Toledo Met dancers as well. So we have okay. aud- we have auditions coming up on August twenty yeah. fourth and twenty sixth. Yeah, already so, mm-hmm. in in the middle of summer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my! Wow, I didn't realize that that takes that much preparation. But that's because I'm naive. I don't know what it takes. Obviously, when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's, I, you know. So Dom Glover. Yes, is our I love di- Dom. He's our Nutcracker director. Oh, I mean, yeah, good good hire. So <laughs> right. yes, right, yeah. exactly. And so we use the choreography from Gen Horiuchi out of the same. St. Louis Ballet, and we're bringing in principal dancers from Cincinnati Ballet. So. Wow. Yeah, see, so it, it, I'm very happy that you guys exist. I, I love seeing, like you're saying, look, we're not going to make you come to our ballet classes so that you're going to work on the ballet the entire time for our Nutcracker show. Right. You're like, if you want to just be a better ballet performer, ballet dancer, you come here. Right. And that's what we're going to teach you, the technique, and get you better at ballet. Oh, if you also want to be in a Nutcracker, there's a Nutcracker show, too. Right. And we'll teach you totally different stuff over there because that's And we have students show, from right? other dance um, uh, dance studios that come t- in, that are in our Nutcracker. So yeah. we had st- students last year from Daryl Jervis, from Gravity, from... Yeah. So we will cast that show pretty much to everyone who shows up. So you have to be seven, 
Mm -hmm. to audition. But we do have four, five, and six-year-olds. Now, those kiddos... Little gumdrops? Well, they're they're baby (laughs) angels. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Angels and little prologue scene. Yeah, like they're little like in their little nightgowns Uh, getting ready for the story. But those kiddos from four, five, and six, they do have to be in class here because we can't wrangle hundreds of four, five, and six-year-olds. That makes sense. Also, I mean, you don't know their their, uh, pay attention abilities. Right, right. I don't know what the right term is, but they could be space cadets for all we know. Can we, can we get to know them a little bit? And yes, see? Yeah. exactly. Because I know I would have been all over the place. Then. And for those kiddos, you know, we tell our parents that the win is getting a three-year-old on stage oh, without yeah. freaking out and <laughs> running off the stage, right? If they can be on stage, I don't care if they get their choreography right. That's the win. Yeah. Developmentally for those children. Yeah. So... Your your place is beautiful though. How many rooms do you have here? I didn't. I got. I have no idea. I have no idea what the place was like. It's the first time here. I drove past it, but I saw your little purple sign. I came back, and I was like, "Oh, that's." I passed it. Turn around, real easy. And I I walk in, and it's you know clean, big open room right to the right. When you first walk in, I'm like, "Whoa, that's that's pretty big open windows. They can all see outside." And then there's another. I mean, you guys have a lot of space here. We do. We have three studios. Nice. One main one that you alluded to out front with mm. the uh, windows. And then yeah, we have two toward the back side, about, um, about 2,000 square feet of studio, maybe. And those are just the dance maybe studios. Maybe not quite. So. 1,700. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and then, but you're saying there's acting and singing right, somewhere around right. here as well. Where are those at? Well, they use the dance studios. They oh, do. They okay. do. Just different times. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So if somebody's tapping in the room next door and then somebody's belting it out over here? Yeah, that's okay. Love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's okay. It's amazing how much they can tune out. Oh, focus, um, right? Yeah, they focus right. on what they're doing at that particular moment. I agree. Yeah. Right. I, I, plus, that's part of rehearsal anyway. If they're going to go out into rehearsals, there's going to be lots of activity. Some group over here working on something, a group over here working right. on another thing. That's just the way it is. That's why I always kind of find it a little funny when it's like they get all bent out of shape on if there's a noise in the audience on stage. It's like, are you serious? The whole rehearsal was a madhouse. Now you have a problem with one person saying a whisper in the audience? Relax. You know? Right. That's true. It gets crazy sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. No, this place is really nutty here. So quiet right now. I know. There's nothing going on right so, now. So, you know what? The majority of our dancers, so we are probably like – Upper level dancers are all dancing. We rented studio space out in White House mm. um, to at the Dance Center of Northwest Ohio. They've been awesome to work with because one of our teachers is under a non-compete. Mm. So she cannot teach here at the Met until January of 2024. So gotcha. So, so yeah. but it's so I, I expected it to be a madhouse. I really did. Yep, not you know, tonight. And it's it's I walk in, I'm like, oh. Everything's put in the right places. Like there's little cubby holes here with with no shoes all in them, and little balls are all in the rack. How's that possible? Listen, and, if you come back here in like two weeks, it's <laughs> going to be like twenty. Right. Well, I believe it because when we were trying to arrange this, you you said specifically like we're just we're coming up for air right now because you guys were, you know, just swamped with activity and doing stuff. And yeah, I'm just glad I was able to finally wrangle you yeah get you in when we conceptualized this business we you know how when you start something you're like huh we'll build it i wonder if anyone will come yeah (laughs) and then they showed up they showed up immediately and so we always joke that we're like feel like we're in charge of a runaway train and we're still on the tracks we're fine but yeah yeah. that's good though exactly it just it's a testament again i say it all the time on this podcast like the passion for theater and performing arts and here uh, is nuts. And you guys open up and everybody's mobs you. It's like, geez, you think you opened a fudge factory or something? Everybody was chocolate maniacs just running to it, right? Well, you know what? We have <laughs> Augustus Gloop is running over to your uh, uh, mm, No, Mr. Gloop. Here. So, but we have awesome, awesome teachers. And That's so, good. like, it's our job. I knew one of your yeah. teachers, but she moved to New York City. Oh, oh yeah. Katie. Katie, Katie moved. So I know she's really good. She did. Stephanie just saw Katie. I last did. Time. Oh, did you? Yeah. Was in New York City. I had dinner with Katie. Mm-hmm. Get out of town. She so you were talking earlier about like the relationships between the older kids and younger kids and how it's crazy in theater how they can interact together. And she knows my my son. She played uh an older character and he was her little brother and they Aww. they've been close ever since. Aww. It's like, really? That's so sweet. Yeah, she still K- wants to talk to him. Katie Trumbull will always have a home. There you go. back to Toledo Met. We <laughs> miss her very much. It's because she's such a grumpy 
old you know person, right? You know, she's so un- hard, you know, hard to work with. Her, her, <laughs> her, one hundred percent. Every time I texted her to ask her to do something, she would write three words: "You got it." You got it. You she's got the it. sweetest. You got it. She's the sweetest. Right. We love her very much. So. Anything else you want to praise about your place? Because I, I just love, the, I'm going to say it again. So you guys come here, get the training that you need to get. And there's really no obligation to do any shows or do anything like that. It's get the proper training. And that's such a big deal for anybody who wants to really get better. So when they go out and do audition for these shows, they will be prepared. And it's not somebody who's pushing you to be in their show. And if you're in community theater shows, which I love, but they're only going to teach you what they need for that show. Right. Not for anything else. Right. And you guys are going to be preparing them for any number of kinds of shows or any kind of roles that they're in. And So, you know, one, one of the things that I think we have learned through our research when mm-hmm. we set this up was we think one of the, one thing that you can fall into is going from show to show to show to show, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. right? And so training is critical. It is. So if, you're, if your student is looking to go to musical theater or dance for college or they're on a professional route for ballet, probably one of the worst things they could do is go show to show to show without getting their training. Because we know that, for instance, that like University of Michigan, which is mm-hmm. one of the best musical theater Absolutely. schools in the country, they don't look at those resumes. They don't care that you were in 17 musicals right. from the time. They want to know, can you sing? Can you act? Can you dance? Exactly. You have to be a triple threat. <laughs> right. Because you, as far as they know, you could be from some school in the middle of nowhere that only had one guy and you got all the parts. And your resume looks amazing, but you can't sing and you can't act and you can't dance. So that's where the, you know, that's why they have to go on that training and really see it for their, for themselves. And for the kids that aren't headed in that direction, performing arts just does so much for their confidence, their ability to speak in front of a crowd, the way they carry themselves, all of the skills they learn inside the four walls of Toledo Met are applicable to a lifelong journey of success. So that's, we realize we're not training. The majority of our students won't do this professionally, but we do feel like we're enhancing them and we're creating an environment here that is emotionally healthy, um, super positive. We provide feedback all the time to our kids so they know what they've got to work on, what tra- what trajectory they're on, um, what's the next step. And then we're their biggest cheerleaders. So we also have made a point to take our students to other performances. Right. Nice. So we all went to the ABT performance at the Valentine this year. We we went to see Company C's um, end of year performance, which was awesome. Amazing. Right. And we took them. So we we have done a lot with the the human experience, which is the modern dance Yeah, we've had them on. So... um, we're trying to get them so they go, so they not only are learning, but they're appreciating the opportunities and the other artists around them. Wow. Love it. So glad I came. Really, really glad I came. And again, I'll just say, it sounds as though you don't foster like this really harsh competitive no. nature at all. Because it is about the training. And oh, by the way, there's some shows once in a while. Right. You know, it's like, get the training. Training, training, training. We're here to lift you up all the time. And a lot of times these groups aren't always that way it is about putting on the best show which you know isn't necessarily always conducive to the training or putting putting into the competition which also may not be about the training on those either if you're just doing competitions all the time so i like that i love that you guys are very diverse very versatile and very uh would you say something positive was over you yeah, I mean, we just try to keep it very, very positive and healthy. Yeah, health, healthy, very healthy culture. There's very positive. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. We We're appreciate so glad it. You came. Thank you. Yeah.